Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Chad from Grayscale Gorilla. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of Arnold 5.3 GPU, the new beta that was just announced. Let's jump in. Okay, before we start, little disclaimer, this is definitely beta software. It's not necessarily something that you wanna use in production yet. It's very beta. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I just felt compelled to say that. And uh, just let you know, these are my first impressions. This is gonna change over time. Uh, there's some things that they're working on that I'm not super excited about, and there's some things that show a lot of promise. So enjoy this video, and uh, always take it with a grain of salt, and hit me in the comments if you have any questions. Happy to answer them. Let's dive in. So I've got a pretty simple scene here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that I'm running the CPU mode, which I should be, yep. Uh, pretty, uh, let's turn off adaptive, uh, good, and no AVs, okay, that's fine. Uh, yep, okay, cool. So we're in CPU mode. I'm just gonna throw, uh, turn on the IPR and let it go. Now, full disclosure, I am running a Threadripper 2990WX, so I've got uh, 32 cores. I did turn off four of them so that uh, the capture wouldn't have any issues. Uh, and you're gonna see here, actually, let's turn on the buckets so you can see the buckets going. We're gonna enable bucket corners in the IPR just so you can see what's going on here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger too so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, so it's going at a pretty good clip. Again, most people probably aren't gonna have 32 cores. I imagine somewhere between eight, 16, some, something like that. Um, but I figured, you know, we gotta start somewhere. I gotta show you the switch because that is definitely the thing that everybody uh, wants to see. Uh, so here, CPU mode going, all right? So I'm gonna turn, open up my render settings, jump into my system tab. And now while it's going, I'm going to switch from, in uh, device selection, I'm gonna choose my render device from CPU and change it to GPU. And you're gonna see, it's going to have to uh, send the scene over to the GPU, which takes a second. In fact, this is one of my pet peeves. I really hope they fix this and make this go faster because waiting 10 seconds uh, is a is a sort of a drag. All right, so there it started. I'll turn off uh, I'll turn off the corners of my buckets since there's no buckets in here. Um, okay, so you can immediately see it starts it starts to uh, get pretty clean. Uh, and if I jump into the main tab, you notice that a lot of our settings are now grayed out. That's because all of the sampling in GPU Arnold uh, in this beta is going to be done through the camera AA. So that's good and bad. Well, actually, I take that back. That's mostly bad for me anyway. Uh, I don't like the fact that all of the samples are brute force being shot through the camera AA because what that means is uh, you can't necessarily clean up specific aspects of your image based on indirect spec or subsurface, things like that. You just have to send more samples into the entire scene, which it's not great. Um, but you can see it's pretty quick. Uh, let's go ahead and adjust this because six is not gonna be enough. You can see some noise here. So let's jump this up to maybe eight. And then I'm also gonna turn on adaptive sampling. So adaptive sampling is something that they're uh, saying is, is the way to control your, your GPU samples. It's basically like a unified sampler. If I turn this on, we've got, uh, this becomes our min and this becomes our max and our adaptive threshold is what's going to essentially tell Arnold to use either the min or the max. I'm not gonna get into adaptive threshold, uh, but if you're familiar with unified sampling, it's very similar to that. All right, so 10 is not gonna be enough. So let's go to like 16 and eight, actually, we probably don't need to go that high. We might be able to go like six and 12, which is really pretty low. Uh, but we'll go ahead and let this cook and let this finish up. And of course, uh, you do have the ability to use the region, which is great. So what I often do is I'll region an area that I think is gonna be noisy so I can see it converge and know if my, my min max are gonna be enough. In this case, it is, it looks fine. So I'll go ahead and turn off the render region and let that cook through and then we're gonna compare it to uh, the CPU. Okay, so it finished in about 24 seconds and looks uh, adequately clean. Uh, now I'm gonna pop over to uh, CPU and we're gonna render that out at, uh, let's see, we'll just leave it at the settings that it was. I will turn off adaptive. So that was like uh, 20, I think it was like 22 or 23 seconds. Uh, so we'll just see where the CPU nuts out. All right, so it, it's gonna finish in about a minute. So you can see it's it's well, uh, twice over that, twice the the, the speed of, of the CPU version. Uh, but, you know, there are some buts here. We're going to talk about those in a little bit. But uh, why, is, uh, why is switching from CPU to GPU important? Why is that a thing that people should care about? 
uh, mainly because uh, if you have a machine with a beefy uh, GPU, you can start to look dev and do all your shader work and whatnot on your workstation, but then when it's time to render, you can send it to a uh, cheaper CPU-based cloud uh, farm. Or if you have your own CPU farm, it's going to be much more cost-effective to send it to a CPU farm right now than it is a, a GPU farm. So that is a huge advantage, in my opinion, for studios and those of you out there that are using uh, cloud-based rendering. Uh, okay, so that is switching. Let's see what I got next here. I got a bunch of scenes queued up. We're just going to try to bang through these. Uh, okay, so let's talk about my one of my other favorite things, which is going to be the uh, subsurface. So there's a new random walk implementation of uh, subsurface light scattering, and it is pretty darn cool. So I've got this head model here. I believe this is all set to go. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and fire off the IPR. Again, I... I wish, I really hope they get this sped up because I hate, after being spoiled by the CPU, waiting for this to uh, turn on has, has sort of become a pet peeve of mine. All right, so you can see we've got nice random walk subsurface happening in uh, in the IPR here. Let's just give myself a little bit more room here. We don't need all that space. Uh, all right, so I'm going to move this light around, and you're going to see that head is going to react. You can see the subsurface happening in the nose. And then if I bring it over to the ear and like maybe bring it down a little bit, I put it right behind the ear. You're going to see it's going to clean up and do a region around that. Uh, but I will say this, it does take a while to converge. Uh, subsurface random walk is not a cheap thing to render. It's computationally heavy, and it's going to take some time to get that to not be noisy. Um, but let's go ahead and turn on some of these other lights because it looks kind of cool. And we'll turn that off. But you can see it's uh, pretty darn interactive. In fact, I think I have uh, my system settings, my initial sampling set to negative one so I get a cleaner result. But we could knock this down to, let's say, negative three, which is going to give us even faster sort of feedback on that lighting. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got next. All right, so I think in this next scene, I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of these heads all put together into one, I'm going to move this over a little bit, into one scene. And I wanted to show you some of the, just how powerful uh, the new optics denoiser can be uh, when working on lighting and texturing and whatnot in the IPR. All right, so here we have um, a couple things going on. We've got a bunch of really high-res head scans being cloned via a cloner, multi-instance, new R20 multi-instance cloner. Uh, we got some depth of field, we got some subsurface, and uh, it's pretty darn good, right? I mean, it's let's make this a little bit bigger, though. It's hard to see. Well, let's go to, like, 65? Yeah, something like that. All right, so let's kind of zero in on this dude right here, and let's let that... Let's let that clean up. Actually, I think it's this guy that's in focus. Let's find him. There we go. All right, so we're going to let that cook. Actually, that's not our focus dude. Who's our focus guy? I think it might be this guy down in the corner. Eh, this guy's close enough. All right, so we've got some uh, depth of field. We've got a lot of stuff going on, and you can see it is pretty darn noisy. Uh, this would take significantly more samples to clean up this indirect subsurface, uh, these indirect subsurface samples right in here. Uh, but I do like using the new optics denoiser, so I'm going to flip that on, and we're going to look at the optics denoising, and you can see it cleaned all that up. It did get rid of some of the really subtle uh, surface details in his head, but you're going to see that for a lot of things, like cer certainly this type of scene, it's completely fine. And you can see it starts to converge rather quickly uh, on our image and gives us a pretty clean representation of what we're going to be rendering. So yeah, this is uh, not too bad. I wouldn't use this to render out image sequences. I wouldn't use it in like, you know, as a way to render out your stuff because obviously uh, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be super great for that. Uh, in, in those cases, I would use their noise denoiser or maybe a third-party denoiser. Uh, but yeah, that new the new optics is working pretty well, especially with this head. I don't know why, but it just seems to work pretty well. And we're and it's really interactive. Uh, it's pretty darn interactive. Uh, but yeah, so the new uh, random walk um, uh, implementation is is rock solid. You can see the ear looks really great. In fact, let's go ahead and turn off some of these other lights. I think I think if I just turn off this one and that one, you can really see in that ear, it's really pretty. 
Okay, so uh, let's keep moving here. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next scene. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and like find a cool shot here. These heads are just so weird. I wonder if this guy had any idea when he was hired to get his head scanned that he was going to end up in so many weird scenarios. Pretty wild. Okay, uh, all right, let's jump into the next one, which is going to be um, do some atmospherics. Light at atmospherics are working in Arnold GPU, uh, the beta uh, that if this launches, hopefully it will, around the 10-second mark usually is where it nets out. All right, so you can see we've got volumetric uh, lights, which is really pretty rad. And, of course, they're, you know, fully interactive and whatnot. We can drop it down here if we want, do this, like, cool backlighting on this mech. We want to look into that light a little bit. Maybe find our camera. Actually, we're already in the camera. Let's jump out into this camera and push that right above his head. Let's move this down to like 50%. There we go. And it's converging pretty quickly. Now, there's definitely some issues um, on our mech, which is sort of the next thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's move this into the shot, which is great too, is like now that we can see these area lights, it makes it look cooler when you have these like visible light fixtures in your shot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the samples on this. I'm, again, this is just a first impression, so I'm not going to dive too deep into optimizing uh, for Arnold GPU, but actually it cleaned up pretty well. Uh, those settings actually did a pretty good job. Okay, so um, I want to talk a minute about some things that I don't like. And for that, I'm going to step into a pretty simple scene. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so we can see better. Uh, for this scene, I've got these gra these Braun coffee pots, which absolutely love this model. Just want to say a uh, shout out to uh, Dan Newman, who provided this model for us. Uh, and it's a pretty typical scene. It's a product render. It's on a white psych. Uh, you've got glass. You're going to have all sorts of stuff. In fact, let's jump into the render settings and switch into CPU mode. And I'm just going to quickly set up uh, some render settings here. We'll kind of knock these down. A little bit and see where it ends up. Turn off adaptive. Yep. Okay. All good. Yep. Yep. Turn on the buckets. Good. Let's go ahead and hit go. And you're going to see it goes pretty darn fast on a Threadripper. All right. And it's a pretty, it's, we got a little bit of noise here. In fact, let's go ahead and clean that up right now. We're going to jump in here. I do believe that's going to be happening in my diffuse. Let's just region that. Let's make sure that's the case. Yeah, okay, that's in the diffuse. All right, cool. So we clean that up. Let's go ahead and jump back out. Uh, we'll let this converge. Give it, give us a little bit more room. Typical product shot, right? Clean render, got some glass, got some metal, plastic, GI, big white psych, very typical use case. So um, if I like bring this up to maybe like 65, and we're just going to going to isolate this guy right here and we'll maybe bring this up a little even a little higher I just want to pay attention I want you guys to pay attention to the indirect samples on this white coffee maker and the glass okay because right now we're going to switch over into GPU mode so I'm going to jump into my system tab switch it to GPU I did turn off the render just to make sure there wasn't going to be any issues uh, yep, that's all good. I am going to tweak these settings to like a min of like 8. I will turn on adaptive. 16 will be my max. 0.01 is my threshold. Uh, all good. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire that off. And what you're going to see once this picks up is how much Arnold GPU beta uh, struggles with indirect samples, both indirect spec and indirect... Um, uh, diffuse uh, and transmission as well to be honest it, it just seems to have a real problem I'm not sure if that actually kicked in or not let's see it's definitely taking a lot longer to kick in and I'm not entirely sure why well let's hope it, it actually finishes here again this is beta so all of this stuff will hopefully be improved Okay, there it goes. For some reason, I don't know why, that scene decided to take 40 seconds to load. 
uh, which is a little little bit concerning. Uh, let me make sure that, yeah, okay. Well, I, I don't have any answers for that. Okay, so that is taking now, what, like a minute? And it's still not quite clean. In fact, if we bring this up to 100% of our output size, and we just region this area around our uh, around the edge, around the edge of the coffee pot here, you're going to see it takes a really long time to get rid of this noise. And for us to really see it, we're going to have to zoom in a little bit. All right, so it's going to struggle in here. And that's my biggest beef with Arnold GPU as it is today in this beta, is that indirect samples are not very optimized. In fact, everything is going through camera A, you can do a little bit of control with the adaptive sampling, but it takes a really long time to clean up uh, rough or glossy reflections, refractions, and even indirect uh, GI. It's a real shame um, because you can see here uh, it's it's pretty grainy still. So if we render this out at full res, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to let this render out full res. And then we're going to switch into, into CPU so that you can see that as well. Okay, so it finished around uh, just about two minutes. And I'm still seeing some grain here uh, in this part of the coffee maker and a little bit in the glass. Um, this is not... A render like this in any other engine would have taken maybe 45 seconds to a minute um, on my on my machine. 2080 Ti's, by the way. Um, so this is a bit concerning. I hope that they can they can solve this, make this a bit faster, because I think the majority of people are going to run into this limitation and this this sort of like sampling uh, issue. Now, uh, for comparison, let's go ahead and jump into uh, CPU mode and bring our camera AA down. I think I was doing it at like four, uh, something like that, and I'll turn off adaptive. And let's go ahead and render this out in CPU mode and. Uh, and see where we net out. Okay, so I didn't tweak the settings much, and I just kind of let it let it cook on where I was. And you can see the CPU version took one minute eleven seconds, and the GPU version took one minute fifty four seconds. So the CPU version is actually quite a bit faster. Now I do have again the Threadripper uh, is, is a bit of a uh, special case, but um, you can see if I zoom in maybe like four hundred percent, the CPU version, which is right here. Uh, is much cleaner than the GPU version in terms of noise. So this GPU version probably should have cooked even longer than it did uh, to converge on, on a cleaner image. So again, I hope that they fix this uh, sampling stuff and make this a little bit faster and cleaner, or at least give us controls to maybe affect specific uh, samples for specific areas, uh, like, you know, indirect and spec and like that. But anyway, um, overall, it's a super strong beta. I'm excited to have uh, Arnold GPU finally out. I've been waiting for it for a really long time. I'm excited to ever have everybody uh, play with it and see what everybody starts making. Uh, and as they update it, be sure to check back here. I'm going to do more videos uh, on first impressions and deeper dives into features and whatnot. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so that was my first impressions of Arnold GPU 5.3 beta. Um, if you have any specific questions, as I said before, hit me in the comments below. Happy to answer them. Uh, I think it's overall got a lot of potential, and I'm definitely excited about that, being able to switch from GPU to CPU. Uh, and send it to a CPU farm. I think that's fantastic. I do think the sampling needs some work. It's still not quite as fast in, as I'd like it to be, but it's a great first start, and I'm excited to see where they take it. So until next time, thanks for watching.